Well, hey friends, welcome back to the cabin. I was sitting out here looking at these hand saws that were given to us recently. These are Distin hand saws that um, I actually redid and they were sharpened before they were given to me. So I really do appreciate that. You know, hand tools is something that I can really use around here. One of them is a fine cut and then the other is a coarse cut. Now, some of the other hand saws that I already had here um, this one is actually made, but this is the one that I redid the handle on. This one is made by Pinna um, from York, Pennsylvania, and this has been sharpened as well. So this is something that I may use um, here in the near future to see how it's going to work. Now, when I started pulling some of these others down, I realized that three more of these hand saws are from distant. Here's one here that is kind of like a medium cut. Um, it's got a really big blade on the end, but this one's made by distant. Uh, here's one here with a little bit finer cut. Uh, this one's also made by distant, but it is missing the ring right here. Uh, so I'll probably have to try to order one of those if I want to make it authentic. And then here's another one right here. This one's more of a coarse cut, um, and this one only has four pins in it, where these others have five. There's five in that one, um, there's five in this one. See, so this one only has four. So, what's unique about that, that pin being one of those, ends up being a screw on the other side right here, so that you can take this thing apart if you need to and, and replace the handle. But yeah didn't realize that I had um, that many distance saws up here so actually I have five of them now a couple of coarse cut uh, a medium and then a couple of fine cut so I'll have to take those in and have those sharpened because honestly I had a comment to show you how you sharpen hand saws that's something I've never done and don't think that I would want to attempt it I'll just take it and have it done because <laughs> it looks time consuming to do all those teeth that's for sure you know, it's not like a chainsaw. I don't mind a chainsaw, but uh, I think I'll just take those in and have those done. Anyway, yeah, that's pretty cool having that many and having a couple more given to us uh, to be able to use up here because I'll tell you, you know, saws are something that I go through quite a bit. I go through a lot of chainsaw blades. I go through a lot of blades on the sawmill. So uh, it won't take very long uh, at the rate that I'm using these to dull them up you know, a little bit. So, yeah, I need to find a good place to get those sharpened. But anyway, yeah, I thought that I would share that with you because I thought that was kind of cool. Well, what's missing from this picture? <laughs> My propane tanks, right? I was editing videos last night and um, I had turned the stove on, you know, and so I was sitting there editing and then all of a sudden I turned around and I looked for some reason and there was no flame in the stove or in the firebox and I thought I turned that on didn't I then it dawned on me that I may have run out of propane because let's see we got this installed at the end of July I think so that August September October uh, for the range and the gas range and the refrigerator um, and then we hooked up the stove and there were several days that I just left the pilot light on because it was getting colder but then realized that a pilot light can burn um, you know somewhere around 50 maybe 60 pounds in a year just as being a pilot light so I thought well I've got cut off valves I can cut it off just as easy you know anyway so yeah I ran out of propane so that means I couldn't cook the refrigerator wasn't working and then I had no heat so we're gonna to have to get a couple more back up or at least one that way I could have hooked it up while I got the other two going anyway what I did was I also got a couple of cutoff valves we didn't put any on this end and I thought that it might be a good idea because as your propane gets low and you don't run out like I did but as it gets low you can actually cut it off here and hook up your new tanks and you don't have to purge that whole line so what I'm gonna to have to do now since it totally ran out I've got to purge the whole line so we're gonna go ahead and install these cutoff valves 
on my propane system. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these hoses. Alright, the next thing that's going to go are these reducers, so we'll take those out. some on that one. And we'll have one of them made up. Okay, there's the one. I don't have to tighten that because it'll all tighten at the same time. that one's good. Then we're going to screw our uh, valve ends back into there, or our reducers back into here. actually realized after I put these on there that I didn't have to have that coupling so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take let's see this is going to turn that way so we're going to take and thread that right onto there this will make it a lot nicer having a way to cut it off and not have to actually um, worry about having to purge my line as long as I don't run out of propane, right? Yeah. So this one's going to turn the same way, so this one will be that way. It'll be just like that. some of that excess down there make it look better right
right, let's get these tanks put back over here. time that righty tidy lefty loosey doesn't apply. It's righty loosey lefty tidy. Did I say that right? You say it three times real fast. All right, let's see. Alright friends, there we go. Now, all I need to do is turn that on. We'll, we'll turn our tanks on here. And then, what I'm going to have to do is turn this on here and we'll check, see if it's got any leaks. I'm going to spray this now and see if we've got any leaks anywhere. Check right here. Nothing there. And nothing there. Alright friends, that was a successful install. Now I'm going to go inside and purge. The stove is the farthest on the line, so I'm going to purge the line until the stove starts. And then I know that the refrigerator and the gas range will run. Now, I am going to have to um, start the pilot light again on the refrigerator, but that's not a big deal. So, let me run inside, we'll check all that, make sure it works. Well, I've got the refrigerator started. Over here is where you turn it to propane, and it'll also run off of AC if I need it to. Here's the thermostat control. Here is the, um, this is actually the igniter right here. And this is what you push to let the fuel go through. And you can see it's over in the green, this little needle right here. So it's working properly. And that's just where you replace the battery for the starter. Well, I'm glad we got that little problem fixed. I, that's something that I didn't intend on working on today, but it happened, right? So when something happens, you fix it. What I had intended to do was to be sharpening on some of the tools because I'm going to start timber framing again. So if you're interested in how I sharpen my tools, click up here in the top right hand corner. I did a little video on how I keep my edge. Folks, thanks so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate it. Look forward to seeing you back up here at the cabin again next time.